Do you want to live in a Jamaica in the future where homosexuals can be a part of your cabinet or any cabinet? I want to live in a Jamaica where persons are free to conduct their private relations. But I'm not talking about leading Jamaica in a direction where its own values are going to be assaulted by others. With respect, that way. was not an answer to my question. Let me put it to you one more time. Yes. Do you, in the future, want to live in a Jamaica where a gay man or a gay woman can be in the cabinet? Sure they can be in the cabinet, not mine. Well, they can't be in yours. Not mine. No, but do you want, do you not think, mine. do you want to live in a Jamaica where they can be and they should be and it would be entirely natural for them to be so? I do not know that that is necessarily the direction in which I want my country to go. And Joelness have become a puppet to the system and have done something that Bruce Golden did not agree with in his time when he became the Prime Minister. Bruce Golden said not in his cabinet. But now, Andrew Wellness legalized it. I said, all right then, in my country, Andrew Wellness become this puppet and go sign a, a Samoa deal that sold his people to the devil. Andrew Wallace become this big puppet that him have the Jamaican people them like a idiot. But bless up to my viewers and my subscribers. Them. Me hope everybody having a blessed and a wonderful morning. Now my viewers and my subscribers remember in everything you do. Always put God first in every and uh, any situation. Just always remember for call upon God. Always remember for pray because a prayer day keep the devil away. No, my viewers and my subscribers, no for one never like Bruce Golden, but Bruce Golden make it no one say not in my cabinet, people. We have a lot coming up inside this update. But before we do that, people, remember to leave a like on this video. Remember to give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you haven't subscribed as yet. And turn on the post notification bell for new content. Alright? We soon come, people. So, welcome back to my viewers and my subscribers. Yeah. Big up to all of my viewers, big up to all of my subscribers them. We continually support the channel and I help the channel for grow. Now, remember to leave a like on this video. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you haven't subscribed as yet and turn on the post notification bell so whenever we drop new content, you will be first to be notified. Also, people, share the video. To either one person in your contact share it on your social media platform all right make we spread the message now people i know enough people maybe not go agree with me but you see mark golden is the next michael manley and me have my reason why me say mark golden is the next michael manley and I think Jamaican people should give Mark Golden a chance to prove himself. Because people, my come to realize that Mark Golden, I think, just like a Michael Manley. I don't know if him listen to Michael Manley too much or him copy Michael Manley. But if him copy Michael Manley, that is a good thing. Because Michael Manley did mean Jamaica. Good and Michael Manley never did a stoop to nobody at all, and that is why you see them fight out Michael Manley so hard. People, Michael Manley was a solid leader, and that is what I see Mark Golden as as well. This is why I say that. In the world, you say now, why are we taking this risk to anger the United States of America? And the answer is this, we are not angering the United States of America, they are angering themselves. They are not going to tell me what relationship I have with Fidel Castro. We have that friendship with Cuba as part of a world alliance of third world nations that are fighting for justice for poor people in the world. 
And I tell you as the party leader, as long as this party is in power, we intend to walk through the world on our feet and not on our knees. No. On a year where Michael Manley just say people, on a year where Michael Manley just say, Michael Manley, I make them know plain and straight, say, I'm not stuck to no boy, no girl. We feel like them come from a first world country. I want to tell him what to do. I fight them, I fight for freedom. But people, that is not what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear what Mark Golden going to say inside this video as well. Listen up. Madam Speaker, many Jamaicans were ashamed to hear Prime Minister Andrew Holness declare openly on an American news channel that Jamaica understands the orbit in which we are. We are in the backyard of the United States. No, sir. What is this? Jamaica is not in anybody's backyard, Madam Speaker. We are no puppet or stooge to any foreign power. We are not for sale. As Michael Manley once courageously said, we walk on the world stage on our feet and not on our knees. You hear that, people? The video that I played for you before. Michael Manley said, Jamaican walk on their feet and not their knees because him now bow to nobody. Jamaican now bow to nobody. Now, Andrew Wallace, run go America go sit down in a chair boat. We in a backyard. We are bow to America. So Mark Golden dry him up. I said, boy, what you do? Eh? Jamaican now I'm about to nobody winning and nobody backyard. Michael Manley tell them already say, we walk on with feet and we don't walk on with knees. So we now I'm about to nobody. But this present Prime Minister Andrew Wallace go sign the summer deal and bow to the people them. And want we if you bow to them as well. And drop with standard and drop with moral. Judge Mighty God of Daniel. How can this man sold us out like that? Mark Stewart did a warn him. You know? Mark Stewart did a warn him. You think a man, you think a, you think a, 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 a vote I go do it? You think, say, are the comrade them and the vote I go do it? You will have to answer to Almighty God for what you and your people have done to the people of Jamaica. What you have done to the church. You have bought out many of the preachers. You buy out the bloggers, silence them. And you buy out the preacher them to silence them. You control most of the top leaders of the church. You are a Nebuchadnezzar. You are a Herod. All those who are coming on for the first time, yes, like and share. Like and share, like and share this thing. Nimrod, Herod, no, no, I call you. You and Jezebel are on the cabinet. As it was in the days of Jezebel and Ahab. That's Christ Almighty. Huh? 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 You and your Jezebel control Jamaica. You buy out the prophet. You buy out the bloggers. Just as how Jezebel silenced the prophets. The same way you and your Jezebel are silent the prophets and the bloggers. You pay them divination money. But God is watching. And see what happened to your, your chatterbox? Your fiercely outer order when of course out people. Everybody should have did know say that man there from Olaba was a real fish. Cause all him do a trace. So the man from Olaba where Mark Stewart talked about is Everal Warmington. Yeah man. I am saying man Mark Stewart talked about Everal Warmington. Now people a long time ago, do a flashback Monday, which me normally don't always do a flashback Monday. So, may I make that one a nice? This is how Andrew Wellness decide to sold us out to the highest bidder and sold us out to the devil himself. 
You understand me? I say, and I can see that a lot of people are very silent about it. And when we talk about how him sold us out, him sell with the devil. Like him no one uh, if he have no standard, no integrity, no no you, you know. How can you sell out the Jamaican people and you know what we believe in? You is a wicked man. You understand me? I say, and every day you get up, all the try to do is to brainwash us. Is to brainwash the people of Jamaica. But we tell you brainwash now. You understand? You manipulate the people of Jamaica and manipulate them into believe everything that you said. But the people of Jamaica don't believe anything more that you're saying. We don't believe. Only a few that claim to say you are God. Believe in your same way. But the majority of Jamaica that believe in a God don't believe in you anymore. Because you try to sell us to the devil. Richard, you already signed up a deal and, and all of that and wait for election to come. So you can win, so you can announce your deal. Them the time day, we can't do nothing again. Because we can't get you out. Them time day. But people, we all need to hope you know. Our eyes are very wide because Andrewness, Andrewlet Wallness, several women, and all of them have a plan for Jamaican people, which the plan is, it is not such a good plan, people. So, make we check out this video and come back. Rules are actually not being changed, the rules are being. No, the rule, no, so it is not us who are changing rules, and I do not want you to give that impression to the public. We are not changing rules. I do not re know of which report you speak, but, but in the past, I am I'm going to finish before you continue. I have to be careful about some things you would like to clarify. Go ahead, clarify. Ask you to read it. Mm -hmm. And what I said, mm -hmm. what I said, Madam Speaker, mm -hmm. we can't appear to be giving that impression. I, and I wouldn't want you to appear to even say it. So that is why I'm saying mm -hmm. I ask for clarity because mm -hmm. the public mm -hmm. might get the impression that that is what, if we are going to be looking and reviewing mm -hmm. at this particular time. That's why I'm asking you just to make it very clear. All right. So, member. Member Hanno, you are correct. The indication that we should review, it is not with a view of my instructing that any changes be made in any rules. The reason I have said I believe it is important for us to continuously interrogate or review our legislations is that we may find subsequently that what was passed may not have been our intent. What was our intent is not the practice. And so we should always go back to look at the legislations. Equally, the standing orders, which are the rules that govern us, are not necessarily all written out in all respects and there may be issues that come from time to time where the house feels that instead of leaving it for the speaker to rule or the president to rule the house would like to now apply a rule which the speaker or the president would be obliged to function in that mechanism as stated in the standing orders. Now the question that I want to ask you guys, Ono no si say got a work. Ono no si say Mrs. Wallinis, Juliet Wallinis, she she don't even know what she talk about. It's like she lost to what she has said. I be a crap she chat, you know? Because she can't even she can't even make a statement, right? So she nervous, she nervous, she nervous, she ner You know when somebody nervous? Yeah, man. I saw she nervous. So, so, so me a try to show say, gotta work. Them confused. Them don't know what to say. 
She attack on you too. She lie. She tell a lie right there. So. Hmm? Right there. So she tell a lie. She confused. She don't know what to say. Because she want to make up lies. But the lies now work. But people check out this other video. Yeah. Statements made by Prime Minister Andrew Holness on the late Michael Manley has awakened the fury of the People's National Party, which is claiming that the Prime Minister is trying to change Jamaica's history. The Prime Minister had made the statement at the recent launch of the JLP's National Scholarship Program. The departure from course during this period of industrialization and industrial development was not due to external forces. It was due to the misadventure of the PNP, which diverted us from the path of economic growth. Now the opposition leader, Dr. Peter Phillips, is not mincing words, expressing disappointment over the speech, saying Holness was seeking to criticize Michael Manley's legacy. Maybe Holness doesn't understand the whole reality of the global economy. And one that we could possibly excuse him for that. But not to understand Jamaica's own history or to misrepresent it. There's no excuse that we can accept. Dr. Phillips is questioning whether wholeness wants to remove a legacy that has crafted Jamaica for what it is today. Is it that they want to discard the gains made by the Status of Children's Act that ensure that no bastard no there again? Experts are also of the view that Manly created a foundation that has benefited many and should not be discredited for his work. No. From Andrew Wallace said this, people should not get rid of him long time. They should not vote him out long time. They should not call him for resign. From you, they go discredit Michael Manley work that he have done. And they go say you, they go erase the man history. You sick in a head, man? You crazy? Michael Manley is one of the greatest if you ever walk Jamaica. Try and remember that. And none of you know, we call yourself leader. Over there, so can't walk in a Michael Manley shoes. So you need to bow down and kiss Michael Manley shoes and have respect to Michael Manley because Uno can't write no history because Uno are not for the people. Ma want to remember one thing. Remember, say a Michael Manley say education. Remember, say a Michael Manley. Say Jamal for all who can read, can go back to school. And Michael Manley make people know say you want to get a cheer. All of them something there. Michael Manley set a foundation that I don't think not even Andrew Wallace himself understand what Michael Manley have done for Jamaican and the Jamaican people. So, these are the things that make the people should think different. Of Anjoulness because me no feel like me no feel like him him him, him a thing straight him not righteous to me maybe him dip on something I don't know people wanna make me know identify yourself man uh, Ian Hills chairman for Western Westmoreland um, National Party yeah, Mister Hills um we saw where a double murder occurred in um Western Westmoreland um earlier today could you give us a little input as to what took place well well this is serious. Not that murders are not taking place everywhere in Jamaica. A couple of years ago, they went into a church and they murdered, I think, one or two persons in the church they murdered. We are now faced where our tourists on the Seven Mile Beach in Negril enjoying themselves. To what I understand and heard is that two persons have been murdered on the beach. Now, I know the tourism dollar is one of the most important dollars for the people of Jamaica and the Jamaican economy. Year to date, the tourism numbers are down. This what has happened today, it's a blemish on the tourism brand and it got, just goes to show you that the government really need a crime plan. They can't put SOE on the beaches in Negril because that will affect the tourists. 
So they only put SOEs in areas where it affects the typical and regular Jamaican that goes out every day to work. So I'm calling on the government. I'm calling on the government to step in. The councillor today spoke about that the Negro Police Division is at a capacity of 50%. He said at a high, it was at over 100 police officers were in Negro, and it's below 50% as we speak. So we need more police in Negro, we need more foot patrol, but we need a crime plan for the entire country. Because whatever we're going to do to protect the tourists and the tourism dollar in Negro, it's supposed to be going for every job. So what has happened today, it's a disappointment. We have lost two more lives than our Jamaica. Whether it is one or two, it is one or two, too many. So I'm calling on the government again. Make we come up with a crime plan to solve crime in this country. If it is hanging, make we hang them. But make we have a crime plan to deal with the people of Jamaica. For all of the people, them, we don't know history and don't know nothing about Michael Manley, my only hopes that I want to learn something from this video. You understand me? I say Michael Manley is a foundation to Jamaica. Michael Manley write history for Jamaica. Michael Manley make enough for we can read and write right now. And Michael Manley make no illiterate and fool fool because me tell you this. Politicians love when people dance and illiterate so them can always brainwash them. But when you have education, them can't really brainwash you so easy. So them don't want you get no education, they want you to dance like a bat. But Michael Manley wasn't having that. And you should not know what Edward Siaga said to the people them. But that is for another Monday flashback. And for anybody who think that this is actually me doing a, a brand new video this is a flashback we call it flashback monday normally every monday me do a flashback before i do a original video so we can take back people to history because there's a lot of us that don't know our history you understand so we have to try to take one back in our history Edward siaga is one of the worst ever prime minister for ever ever Grease the lands of Jamaica. Him a one of the worst. So if you know what if you say Michael Manley a one of the worst, let me teach you something. Edward Siaga, apart from Andrew Wallace, is one of the worst prime minister ever Greece Jamaica. Andrew Wallace a one of the worst prime minister. Why do we make me make foot type tell you? Know? Probably me don't know when the eye open but in a blind. Big up Andrew Wallace as a person. But as a leader, as a prime minister, you are the worst. No disrespect. No point intended. I'm not trying to disrespect you. But I am telling you the honest truth. You are the worst prime minister Jamaica has ever seen. The people allow you to manipulate them with antics and dramatics you have learned the art of charisma and you're charismatic with what you do and you have some people some young people where work with you where you tell you where the street like and them thing there so you come out with a charade and um you perform well as an actor but me did see through that that's why i could have tell the people them from early they are the biggest mistake them i got ever make to make you be back the prime minister one of the worst prime minister ever Greece Jamaica. Trust me, people. And uh, the sooner we can open up our eyes and see that this man is not for us. This man means us nothing good. It is much better for most of us. You understand me? I say, not like we are fight against Andrew Wallace, but we are fight against we are fighting against what he is doing to our people. And from the moment you go sign the Samoa deal, and we find out you sign the Samoa deal, I they say it de definitely done. It done, 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 done. Trust me. But people, check out this history video again. Funny Caribbean, usually tranquil island. Um, I think that one has to 
distinguish two clear things. Firstly, um, the city of Kingston, like many, many cities with problems of unemployment and poverty, has always had a tendency to violence of the kind that you would find certainly in many North American cities, set and off balance and that sort of thing. And definitely, therefore, there is a political element has crept into the situation. Well, why would uh, the opposition party, I, I presume you're referring to the opposition party, there are only two parties running. Yes. And why would they go to tactics of that nature? Don't you think it would harm them more than, than do them any good? Well, I think that the whole thing, you see, has, um, has been, I think, rather, rather cleverly managed in that our, our political tradition has always involved, again, a very marginal element of violence, although it used to be in the old days just fist fights and the occasional brick and things of that sort. And um, recently what has happened, as I say, is to introduce into this, this tendency a certain element that I think is barred from the underworld. And uh, I think this has been done by certain elements quite deliberately to cause a certain panic in the society, to give the impression that the government's not really in control. And of course, sometimes, as happens when the violence starts on one side, you get reaction from the other side. So in the end, you get a confused situation in which the average citizen may think, well, it just seems to be both of them at each other. Mm -hmm. So that one gets a cloak under which, really, to work the plan. In, so. mm -hmm. in driving uh, around Kingston, we noticed a lot of signs saying, Castro go home or CIA go home. There seems to be a Cuban-American involvement in this. Now, how much influence do these countries have on this political scene at this time? They don't, neither country has any <coughs> general influence in the, in the Jamaican political scene. What has happened is that um, because the Jamaican government has had a policy of friendly relations with Cuba, very like the Canadian government, who have always had a tradition of friendly relations with, with Cuba. Um, we have been charged by the more right-wing extremist elements of our opposition with all sorts of propaganda in what has really been an orchestrated communist smear tactic. Very unfair, we are not communist, we are very much a sort of social democrat group, democratic socialist group. And uh, these smear tactics have been worked, which accounts for the Castro go home kind of slogan. And then, of course, there has been a certain tension in certain elements in the United States of America about our relations with Cuba, as indeed there is tension in America towards um, um, Canada's attitude towards Cuba, as you know, mm -hmm. is not approved of by the State Department. And so somehow the, all this has got escalated into a series of charges and counter charges. Well, is there some financial involvement, say, from the Cubans to your government and from the Americans to the opposition? No. Well, I, I can't speak for the, for the Americans with the opposition. There's no financial involvement between the Cubans and us, none whatsoever. The Cubans are investing here, though. They're like building a school. Uh, well, that, uh, that really was uh, a gesture of solidarity. It's very much a, you know, there's a new thing emerging in the third world where third world countries often do things for each other on a cooperative basis in a manner that I think is quite new in world experience and very interesting. We, for instance, are helping them with no charge at all with some things that we think we are quite good at, like tourism. We send teams with, for no charge to help them organize their new tourist industry. And also we have been one of the countries here who has, I think, shown, shown courage in standing up for Cuba's right to be accepted as a normal part of the Latin American family. And I think that they appreciate this, and as a gesture of solidarity, offered to build this school mm -hmm. as a sort of reciprocal gesture, mm -hmm. which of course became a subject of propaganda. Yes, why would they be so touchy, though, for people to take pictures of, of a project like that? Ah, well, you see, because they have been, the fact that they're building this school has been the subject of a lot of unfavorable comment in the American press. Right-wing elements in Jamaica have been very nasty about it. And they, after all, you know, have a very unfortunate experience with the CIA, as I'm sure you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have had their own embassy. At yes, in, in recent times, for example, their embassy has been attacked.
twice here by extremist right-wing elements. And I think that, 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 that this tends to make them very sensitive and, 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 and therefore touchy, as you said, touchy about the situation and, and very careful. And, you know, with a state of emergency on, they would be particularly, I think, cautious at this time. What about Canadian investment in Jamaica? I understand it's about $300 million. And with the, the swing toward socialism or perhaps eventual nationalization, what sort of situation are they in now? Is it a precarious thing for them? or No, I know. They, we have very good relations with, with Canadian capital generally in Jamaica. We've found them to be good corporate citizens. They, and the banks, by and large, cooperate with the government very well. We, we really haven't had any problems in that. And with one of your major investments, of course, which is the, the Alcan operation here, we, as you know, are in the middle of a major revision of our whole bauxite strategy because this is our critical basic resource. It's the one really big thing we have going for us, apart from tourism. Is we really we have our people, we have bauxite, and we have tourism, and we have sugar. And um, <coughs> the, our, our negotiations with the Alcan Group to work out a new relationship between them and the Jamaica government are, are going very well and I think are, are getting quite near to an amicable settlement. Mm -hmm. One of the, uh, I should have asked this along with the first part of the interview, but one of the reasons I got for the, if I may call it terror and unrest here, was the fact, the unemployment factor, and uh, the fires and things that have been going on have been going on in a very poor area. Do you feel that perhaps it's because of these poor people and the unemployment rate that, that has... No, absolutely not. Absolutely nothing to do with it at all. What that does is to create a tense situation. But the actual terrorism is manipulated. And um, it, it, it really is very easy to, easy to demonstrate this because um, some of the problems that we have had have been small groups of gunmen who operate from quite expensive Toyota cars. Now, when you own a Toyota car, and the three of you work from that, I don't think you really are poor. But what, what the poverty does, as I say, is to create an atmosphere that can be exploited and manipulated by anybody who is ruthless. Um, <clears throat> where the unemployment is concerned, for example, the, with all the tremendous world inflationary pressures that have hit a little country like Jamaica so hard, and now with the economic recession that hit us so hard late last year and earlier this year. Um, in spite of all that, we have actually reduced unemployment slightly. Not as much as we would have liked, but we have actually pulled it down a couple percentage points. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that these poor people then in Trenchtown and other areas are being used? Oh yes, as far as this is concerned, there's no question that they're being used. Mm -hmm. No question at all. In regard to terrorism on the island then, how well, it's not really terrorism on the island. Well, that's what I'm getting at. What about the tourist situation? No. Is, it, is it safe for tourists? Absolutely to safe. It is, although it's a very unpleasant situation, it is our good luck, in a sense, that all of this has been restricted to um, the, the urban ghetto area, an area where we are pushing massive housing developments right now within our very limited resources. We really are working very hard and building thousands of houses a year now for the poor. But it's a huge backlog to overtake. It can't be overtaken in, you know, in three, five years. It's a huge task. But the violence itself and the manipulation of it is very much a phenomenon in the western part of Lower Kingston, where the bad concentration of poverty is. The emergency powers, politically, will it help you or harm you? Well, we haven't really thought of it in those terms because basically our objective in, in the state of, of emergency is to do with the state of the society, its confidence, and its economy. The violence was beginning to break the confidence of the Jamaican people in their own society and therefore having a very bad effect on the economy. And <clears throat> we are determined by the use of this admittedly extreme measure to create an atmosphere in which the Jamaican people begin to recover their self-confidence in their society and begin, therefore, to act in a dynamic and buoyant way in their economy. That's, that's really what our objectives are. Is it working? We think it's working very well. We're very pleased with the results. What are your chances in the next election? We'll win. Are you sure about that? 
Well, let me put it this way, you know, um, to say that you are sure always sounds, sounds arrogant. What I really feel is that, you know, we have done a tremendous amount for the poor, for the people, in spite of the pressures. We've got a very powerful organization. We've got very solid mass support, a very strong among small farmers and groups of that sort up in the hinterland, actually the part of Jamaica the tourist doesn't get to see. And we, we feel that the people understand us and we understand the people.